Believe it or not, cuttings is probably the easiest way to generate plants that there is. It's much easier than seeding. It's not quite as difficult as division and rescue. And you can do it with anything that is semi-wood or uh, foliar in any form or shape. Okay? It's a very simple process and I'm going to show you a specific technique that is called stem cuttings. Okay, we're going to work with stems. It's really, really very, very simple. Okay? And we're going to start with one. I'm going to talk about these pots a little bit. And the reason I like this pot for cuttings is because, as you will clearly see, I am going to bury two nodes. And if you don't have a deep pot, you will not have enough soil to do that. So a 4x4 four four is usually too short. So I like these particular types of plant or pots. Uh, this happens to be, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the process for cuttings is very, very simple. Okay, what we're going to do is work with nodes. And a minimum of three nodes is necessary for cutting. Now you can do it with two, but you're much, much better off if you go with three. Okay? And what you see is I've just cut a, a, a section here that has three nodes in it. And all I'm going to do is first thing cut the two bottom nodes off completely right at the stem. And in this case, I'll cut about 80% of the leaf. Why do I cut the leaf down? This is losing water, continually losing water. Okay, what doesn't this plant have at this point? Roots. Roots. So it has no <laughs> ability to get water. Okay, if you don't cut that leaf back, there's a good possibility it'll dry out and die before it gets the roots laid down. Okay, so the next thing, this is a rooting hormone. This one happens to be Schultz takes root. Uh, Rutone is the normal name for it. This is a weak acid. And consequently, if you put a lot of this on your cut, you could burn the cut. Okay, so what I like to do is usually just pour a little bit in the top. This forces me not to stick it deep into the material. You notice I have not made my last cut yet. Okay, you see where this node is right here? I've cut the leaf off the node, but right, right at the node at an angle, I'm going to make a fresh cut. And then I'm going to put this in and knock off as much of it as I can. And stick this in. Now you notice this pot allowed that second node to get into the soil. If I'd have had a 4x4, four four, it wouldn't have gotten in. Yes, ma'am. So your cut was right up to that, that bottom node? Yes. At a slant? At a slant. Okay. I've also cut right above the top leaf. Okay, so I have two nodes in. Now, where is the roots going to come out of? It's going to come out of the nodes. Exactly. What is a node? A node is an area of change. And that's exactly what you're looking for. Why did I cut the top off? Because I want the plant always grows at the top. I want the plant at this point to stop growing outward and put down roots. So I've given it every chance that I can to do that. Okay, the first thing I do is make sure I have three nodes. Cut under the first one. Cut the leaves off the first node. Cut the leaves off the second node. Cut above the third node. If there are two leaves, cut one of the leaves off. So I said, I'll cut and cut it, and it roughly in half. So uh, roughly, See, I, I have I've one noticed, quarter cause I, cause I, cause of the that mulberry wasn't on the area list. of the leaf. The then I go and, back uh, to my original one, cut right the underneath the node. I make my yeah, final angled upward cut. 
Okay, it's really very simple. In Texas, it's much easier than it would be up north where it's dry. Okay, I put these in my backyard. I actually put a saucer of water underneath them so they stay damp and keep them out of direct sun. The brighter, the more intense the light that they're in, the quicker you're going to get roots. So the brighter the light, the better. Just no direct sun. Now, having said that, okay, what would you do if we get a dry time? You know, what I like to do is, and, and this happens to be for everybody's information, uh, Amsonia Tabor Montanas that have been laid down. I did not wait today. I'm sorry, but that's a series of cuttings off of one stalk. Okay? If you wanted to protect this a little bit more, all you need to do is to take a baggie, put it over the top of it, and a couple pieces of tape, and you just generated your greenhouse. Pull this all the way in. A smaller baggie would be better on this pot, but that's the concept. A couple pieces of tape, and this will start to condense the same day. Okay, so if you do get a dry period and you have something, or you have a very short, um, a single node underground, bag it up. Okay, and when I say bag it up, if you're using bigger pots, you can use something like a clothes hanger and uh, um, a dry cleaning bag. Just put it across the top of it duct tape it around the pot and go with it. Okay, two to three weeks, uncover it. Don't let it in much longer than that. Okay, around here, I don't cover anything except when it's really, really dry. When I say dry, I'm saying no humidity. Okay, this was laid down, and we're going to do some of this, three weeks ago. See the roots are out the bottom, the plant is doing well, and this was nothing but sitting in this tray, just like that. It is, in Texas, if you're out of the sun, it's relatively easy because the humidity is always high. So it doesn't lose water quickly. Cutting is by far the easiest way to generate plants. There are all kind of mechanisms for doing this differently. The first time I ever cut, I cut a rose, stuck it in the ground, and put a 7-Up bottle that I'd cut the bottom off of over the top of it and left the cap on. I mean, it works like a champ. You're tr just trying to hold the humidity around the plant so it doesn't dry out until those roots get started. Uh, yes? Did you say you put it in a saucer of water all the time? Or? Yes, it's just so I can see when it goes dry. Oh, okay, so it's constantly wet. No. Yes. Okay. But it's in the bottom. It's yeah. not all the... Okay, I mean this soil will wick. This, this particular soil is what they use in African violet soil. It's basically one-third uh, vermiculite, one-third... Uh, I'm sorry? Perlite. Perlite and one-third of moss. That's correct. And that will wick. So this will keep the water that it needs at the area where you want the roots to grow. Question. Yeah. How do you know when to remove either a plastic bag or a 7-Up bottle? As soon as you see growth. As soon as you start to As soon see as you see growth. How do you see growth? Okay. You saw what I did. You notice it has the funny top. Look at these plants. What do you see? You can see where I took the top cut. Okay. This is all new growth. And what is this? Frog this frog is frog fruit. Oh, okay. See, see the cuts? I mean, every one of them, you can see where yeah. I cut the top off. See them? Yeah. This is all new growth. As soon as you see the first new growth, cut, get the top off. The biggest danger in Texas is, is that if you leave the bag on too long, it'll rot. Exactly. Everybody see?